Hey everybody, this week let's check out another really wow build. This time it's the Cockett Q filter. So I'm up to my third really wow PCB build review, and this time we're looking at the Cockett Q filter board. A Q filter, the best way to explain it is to think of a wah pedal. So a wah pedal allows you to provide some sort of frequency filter based on how you cock your pedal on your wah. What a Q filter pedal does is exactly that same thing except it replaces the foot pedal with control knobs. This allows you to more easily set a cocked wah effect somewhere in there, leave it on the board, you can turn it off and on and you don't have to worry about finding it with adjusting the pedal with your foot. So a little bit about the build. Like every other order from Really Wow, all you're gonna get is the PCB, which here you can see is this green one that fits nicely into a 1590B case. You're gonna to have to populate this out with your own components, but Really Wow, of course, does provide you a complete components list as well as instructions for getting this together. I'm not gonna go into everything with the uh, schematic for the circuit. I'm just gonna let you know that there's a lot of op amps here that are performing filtering functions. Um, you have some internal controls to adjust the frequency filter as you see fit as well. So turning it around to the outside of the pedal, you can see we have three controls. One is the volume. That's easy enough to explain. You turn it up, your volume goes up. You turn it down, your volume goes down. Uh, the other two are called Q and peak. And to understand what these do, I think we need to take a little bit more of an in-depth review of what a Q filter actually does to your input signal. So a Q filter or a wah pedal is essentially a bandpass filter. Um, the easiest way to explain this is to probably think about our low pass filters and our high pass filters. So a low pass filter is going to pass anything that has a frequency below a certain cutoff. So this is used to essentially cut treble out of your signal. A high pass filter does the opposite where it's going to cut bass out of your treble. So all the high frequencies are passed or your treble frequencies. A bandpass filter, instead of focusing on everything below a certain point or everything above a certain point, looks at a specific band of frequencies. So from frequency X to frequency Y, it's going to pass those and anything on either side of that, it's going to attenuate or lessen. So there's essentially three major characteristics of a bandpass filter. Uh, the first being the peak. So of course the cockpit has a function of peak and this is the center frequency of your passband. So if I have a passband that ranges from 1000 kilohertz to 2000 kilohertz, my peak is usually going to be at 1500 kilohertz. Now I say usually because not everything is symmetrical in signal processing, so sometimes that peak will uh, sit on one side or the other of that center frequency. Now one thing to know is the peak on the Q filter here is the same as what is being changed when I adjust my foot pedal on a wah pedal. The second major characteristic of a bandpass filter is its bandwidth. So in an ideal situation, the bandwidth would be equal to the width of the passband. So if I have that 1000 to 2000 kilohertz passband, my bandwidth would be 1000 kilohertz in an ideal situation. But of course, in a real situation, you're not gonna get that sharp cutoff. You're gonna get more of an attenuation on either side. So what we do is we measure the bandwidth at a negative three dB uh, cutoff frequency. So once our amplitude has dropped negative three dB, we measure that on either side of the passband, and that's how we calculate the real bandwidth of a real signal. So the third characteristic of a bandpass filter is its Q. On the cockpit, we have a knob for Q. And this is essentially a ratio of your peak frequency over the frequency of your bandwidth. So you can think of this as if the Q goes up, your bandwidth is either shrinking or your peak's increasing, or if your Q goes down, your bandwidth is widening and your peak is lowering, one or the other. Um, the easiest way to think about it with the Q is as I increase the peak, I'm narrowing the number of frequencies that I'm allowing through on either side. And as I decrease it, I'm allowing more and more frequencies through. One thing to note about the Q, maybe when referencing it to a wah pedal, a lot of wah pedals will just simply have the Q set and then allow you to adjust the peak with the foot. 
And then some of the newer wah pedals will allow you to adjust the cue on the side, set it, forget it, and then use your foot pedal to adjust the peak. So now that we know a little bit about bandpass filters, I wanna show you guys this in practice using the Cocket by Ruliwow. Uh, we're gonna plug this in, give you guys some sounds, and hopefully you'll see how a bandpass filter works. And on the musical side of it, what kind of cool sounds you can get out of the Cocket by Ruliwow. So I've got my Telecaster in my hand here, and I'm gonna run you through the functions of the Cocket by Ruliwow. Uh, as you can see, we've got three knobs here, the volume, the cue, and the peak. Uh, from my uh, earlier comments, obviously you guys should have some idea what each of these controls will do. Uh, volume set about halfway, we'll probably keep it there for this whole demo, play around with the Q and the peak and see if you guys can figure out what's going on here. So to start, let's get a clean sound. All right, let's crank on the cocket, or as I call it, the cock of the walk. So right now the Q is about halfway and so is the peak. So definitely can hear uh, some of those frequencies being cut out, especially on the low and high end. Um, not a lot of bass, not a lot of treble there. Uh, I guess that's the midway point for this pedal. So let's look at moving the peak. We should get a lot more treble if we crank up the peak the whole way. Wow, okay, yeah, that is piercing treble uh, with the Telecaster for sure. So I would definitely not use that in that case. Let's move it back down and we should get a lot more bass if our peak is all the way down. And I should mention I'm in the middle position with my Telecaster here, um, and I've got Texas Special pickups in it, so they're pretty high output pickups. Uh, on that one, you can definitely hear a lot more bass uh, with the peak down low. Let's put the peak back to center and play around with the Q. So if you can remember from earlier in the video, the Q is basically how many frequencies I'm going to let through. Uh, if I turn my Q down, I should get a lot more frequencies. So let's, let's get a reference here. So let's take a look if we turn the cue down. So yeah, there it is. You turn the cue all the way down, you're widening that bandwidth, and you're basically going to get a very similar sound to if the pedal was off. So yeah, some volume difference there, but for the most part, very similar sound frequency wise. So now let's sharpen that signal, or sorry, sharpen that bandwidth. Uh, this is gonna be a lot less frequencies, so we should hear something a little bit more uh, uh, muffled or sharp, I guess. Yeah, and back just for a reference on that. So hopefully you can see that, that uh, you're getting more frequencies as you turn your Q knob down. You're gonna get uh, less frequencies in your signal and your output signal if you turn that Q knob up. More trouble with your peak up, more bass with your peak down. 
So with that, let's uh, see if we can put this into some music and we'll see what we can, uh, what we can get out of the cockpit. <laughs> So I hope you guys enjoyed that demo of the RuliWow Cockpit Board. I hope you guys also learned something a little bit about bandpass filters and how they work and how it applies to this effect. Uh, I would definitely recommend checking this out. It's not something you're going to put on every single pedal board, but it's definitely something that you'll have some fun playing around with and can liven up some solos as well. Obviously, if you have a wah pedal already, this might seem a little bit redundant. But the ability to adjust the cue and also the ability to set it and forget it is definitely something that you might be interested in as a musician. Uh, the cocked wah effect is used in a lot of different places and this is one way to get it without having a wah pedal. So with that, I'm going to leave it for this week. If you guys have any questions on this build, I'd love to hear it. You guys can comment below. Make sure to like, subscribe, and we'll see you next time. Thanks a lot.